Well, gee, guys, is it worth calling your SSD NVMe? As you can see here, this one doesn't have any sort of plate with a thermal pad on it to keep it running cool. So the first thing you want to do is head over to the manufacturer of that NVMe drive and check the storage temperature and the operating temperature of that NVMe drive. You can see this one is 0 to 70 Celsius for operating temperatures. We don't really want to go above 70 Celsius. Now, some other boards will have some sort of plate on them like this one with a thermal pad on it. It's like a heat sink and some of them don't. Now, this does have two slots on here. One has a plate with a thermal pad and the other one doesn't come with one. But I've populated both of these. So this Kingston one here doesn't have any sort of plate with a thermal pad on it to keep it cool. Now, let's run some benchmarks here to try and get some heat into the actual drive here and see what we get to here. Now, this will get a little bit toasty when you're doing some sort of benchmark here, and it did get to around about 61 degrees Celsius, and it can get a little bit hotter than that depending on what type of task you're doing, whether it'll be rendering videos or whether it be constant gaming and things like that. These are the things you have to take into account when you're using one of these super fast NVMe drives. So you can see, because this got to 61 degrees Celsius, it was in its safety area of operating okay. But for me, it's a little bit too hot and I want to try to cool that down. So I'm gonna show you basically how you can get the temperatures down on your NVMe drive if you don't have some sort of uh, you know, heat shield or heat spreader on your motherboard. Now you can see the design of these. These do have a little bit of aluminium on the top of here, which tries to dissipate heat. And this is microfin, as you can see, and it's going across the controller and the NAND on this uh, particular NVMe drive. Now, of course, you really want to keep that controller nice and cool, and you don't want that getting super hot. It's that that's going to really sort of shorten the life of your drive. Now, if you've got the NAND getting a little bit warm, that's okay because they operate at certain temperatures. Now, you can buy heat sinks just like this one that will go over the top of that cooler. Now, there's different ones like this, which is the Yatang, uh, which is an M.2 SSD heat sink. This is the full blown uh, heat sink. You have to make sure that it will fit your motherboard. But this is probably one of the best ones on the market, which will allow you to install this on your drive and keep it running super cool. Well, that's the uh, idea of it. So we'll give it a test and see how it works out. So this is what you get in the kit here. You're gonna get your screws uh, to get this set up. You're gonna get three thermal pads here. So it's gonna have one thermal pad on the bottom and one on top. And then we can put it into this little uh, heat sink here, which is made of aluminum. We can put it in here and uh, this will keep it cool. This will allow to dissipate heat from the actual drive itself. Now, if your motherboard does have some sort of heatsink on it with a thermal pad on here like this one, then you can use it. But this motherboard does come with two Gen 4 slots on it, which means only one has the actual thermal pad. And this is quite a thick thermal pad. So you can use something like this to uh, cool your NVMe drive or SSD on here. And this will keep it running nice and cool. Now, some NVMe drives don't even have an heat spreader on them like this one. This is an XPG one, and it's pretty fast. So you're going to want to make sure you keep this running nice and cool because that controller is going to get super hot. So you need to make sure that you use something on here to cool it. Now, depending on what type of tasks you're doing will determine how hot the actual drive gets. So let's get back to our installation of this cooler or heatsink on our NVMe drive, and we can... Uh, move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and get this prepared, ready to install our drive. So we need to put the first thermal pad on, just have to remove this plastic part on the bottom, and then we can stick this down in the actual well of the heatsink here. So let's just go ahead and do this. And I'm just going to line it up. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but I just like to keep things nice and tidy. So let's go ahead and uh, push this down here. Now we need to remove the top plastic cover on here and uh, we can then put the drive on top of it. So let's go ahead and pull this off. These are a bit fiddly. So just uh, take your time and pull this off. Doesn't matter if you pull the thermal pad off a little bit, you can always push it back down with your finger. It's not toxic or anything like that. These are just thermal pads. So what we're gonna do next is put our drive on here and this will obviously cool it from the bottom and it will also cool it from the top with the thermal pads 
and the heat will get dissipated through the actual aluminium casing that's on there. So just have to line these notches up here and uh, we can then uh, put this into its little housing here. So let's go ahead and do this and line this up here. Now you want to make sure that you leave enough room for the screw uh, to be put in and also enough room to slot it into the actual motherboard. So just slide that into position here until you get it nice and straight here. So you can see I've left enough for the actual uh, connector at the end to go into the actual slot on the M.2 on the board here. Once you're happy with that, you can actually uh, put the next thermal pad on. Now, I've seen some people removing the aluminium uh, spreader on the actual uh, drive itself. There's no need to do that. That is already there to cool down the drive. So you may as well leave that on there. And if you do remove it, you're probably going to end up voiding your warranty. So leave that on the actual drive itself. Let's go ahead and put this next thermal pad on. Make sure you remove all of the plastic coverings here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Uh, we just need to pull this off. If you pull the pad off a little bit, just tap it down like so. Should be fine. So now we've got that on. What we need to do next is put the top piece on and then we can screw down uh, the actual top piece. And this is the aluminium top piece here. So let's go ahead and get this onto our drive and we can screw it all down. Now, again, you don't always need to use a heatsink for your drive. If you're not doing taxing uh, work with your drive and your drive is not getting super hot, then you probably don't need to use one of these heat sinks. You only need to use an heat sink if your drive is getting close to its thermal temperatures that is recommended on their website. So for instance, if it says 70 degrees Celsius and when you're gaming or you're red, uh, rendering out videos and it's getting close to that or over that and it's going in the red, then you may want to use a heat sink to cool down the controller and keep it running nice and cool. Uh, and that basically is all done. We've now got this all screwed in. You can see the actual thermal pads on the bottom and the top there, and it's in its nice little housing here. So what we're going to do is put this into the case and slot this into the motherboard. Now, as long as you've got room here to put this in and it's not causing any issues like the graphics card or anything like that, then you should be okay. You can see it's just sitting above the graphics card there. The picture's a little bit blurry. Uh, but it still shows you the actual drive in here. And you can already see the drive is nice and cool. It's uh, 22 Celsius, and that's at idle. So what we need to do now is I'm going to run a benchmark on here, the same what we did before, and uh, I'm going to keep refreshing this to uh, keep that temperature updated so we can uh, see what the temperatures it gets to. So let's go ahead and uh, get that benchmark started, and we can then uh, take a close look at the temperatures of that drive. Now, there is going to be heat going into the drive because we're using the drive in a benchmark and it's going to start to uh, put a bit of heat into that drive. You can see it's up to 36 Celsius, which is literally at the moment half of what it was before or just, just over half. And uh, I'll run this right the way through to the end and you can see we got to, which is only 43 Celsius, which is quite a big drop compared to uh, what it was before got to about 61 uh, or something along those lines so depending on what you're doing with your drive if you can take off 20 celsius from your drive then for me that is a win situation because now we've got the drive running at a really nice uh, sort of sweet spot and you can see here the temperature after a few minutes has dropped right the way down to 30 celsius which is you know, in blue which means it's running nice and cool so if you're running your system with a pretty toasty NVMe drive and you want to get it cooler, then try some of these methods to get your temperatures down. I'll leave the link in the video description for this product that I used. I bought this in America, but you can get it in the UK as well. A pretty decent bit of kit if you ask me to bring down temperatures on any uh, M.2 SSD NVMe drive. So anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Uh, I just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.